This is the Cintro Knitting Machine, and today I'll be showing you some quick projects you can do under an hour using the tube setting on the machine. There are tons of different projects you can make with this machine, so I might make a part two later on to include some panel projects. To get started with every project in this video, you'll need the following materials. For every project, you'll first need to make sure the machine is in tube mode, then you will have to cast on. Casting on is pretty easy, you just want to make sure that this white pin is to the right of the pink yarn holder before starting your cast on. This white pin indicates when a new row will start. Then you'll take your yarn and push it under the first pink pin. I always make sure to leave a really long tail for my projects so I won't have to add on yarn when I'm casting off or sewing. You're then going to start spinning slowly while you move the yarn over the next pin and then under the next one. You're going to keep going over and under and over and under until you reach the white pin. Once you reach the white pin, make sure the yarn goes over the pin and into the pin yarn holder. Make sure it goes into both little slots of the yarn holder and then into the tension holder underneath the machine. Since I'm using weight for yarn, I'm going to insert it into the middle holder. A lighter weight will go into the first holder and a thicker yarn will go into the last holder. After that, you're ready to begin your projects. For each project in this video, I use a technique that uses scrap yarn in the beginning and end of the project so that the ends will be nice and neat after casting off. All you have to do is cast on the scrap yarn and spin slowly for 10 rows. You want to make sure you go slow so that none of the stitches get dropped since when you're working the beginning rows of the project, the stitches are more prone to falling off the pins. After the 10 rows, reset your row counter on the side and then start your projects. For the regular beanie, you don't have to add scrap yarn, but I did it anyway. After the 10 rows of scrap yarn is added, add the color you want, which in this case is red since I'm doing a solid red beanie. To add a color to your project, all you're going to do is pull the scrap yarn out of the yarn holder and to the left side of the pin you stop spinning the machine on. Then you're going to take your new color and push it into the yarn holder and then to the right of the pin in front of the yarn holder. Make sure the yarn is under that pin so that it can attach smoothly. Reset the row counter and you're ready to begin. For this beanie, all you're going to do is spin around and around until you reach 130 rows. You can start spinning faster after the 12th or 13th row and your stitches shouldn't fall off. Also, there's going to be a tiny hole where you attached the color and that's perfectly fine. Once you take the scrap yarn and finish off the project, that won't be there. Here, I ran out of my yarn, so I thought it would be good to show you how I attach a new color within the project. You're going to add it just like you would when adding the yarn after the scrap yarn by putting the old yarn to the left side of the pin you stop spinning at and then add the new color under the pin that's at the yarn holder. You're then going to spin like normal. It's that easy. After a couple of rows, I stop spinning and gently tie the two strands together twice and then cut the tails off. If you know a better way to close the gap, then follow that, but this is just the way that I do it. Once you reach 130 rows, add your scrap yarn and spin for 10 more rows. After you reach the 10 rows of scrap yarn, cut the yarn and hold it up from the machine. You're then going to spin for 2 rows without any yarn being added. On the second row, the project will start to fall off the machine. Now it's time to close up the beanie. 
Like I said before, scrap yarn for the beanie isn't necessary, but I still add it anyway just for extra comfort. You're first going to take a tapestry needle and insert your tail of yarn and insert the tapestry needle into each stitch near the scrap yarn to take the scrap yarn off. Once you're through all the loops, you can pull the scrap yarn off, then repeat that on the other side. Once the scrap yarn is off of both sides, you're going to pull one end of the beanie inside through the other end. Then pull the end through a bit more before pulling the loose ends to close the gap of the beanie. You want the inside gap to be slightly outside of the outside gap if that makes sense. Make sure to pull the inside gap tail to close it first and then the outside tail. Then I tuck the inside back slightly inside and then close the gap tightly. After that, I take the tapestry needle, add the ends to the tapestry needle, and then sew the ends back and forth through the top of the beanie. After, I tie the tails together and then cut them off. Then I turn the beanie inside out and the beanie is complete. For the cat beanie, I decided to do three different colors for the color scheme. So I first added my first color after finishing my 10 rows of scrap yarn and then spun the machine for five rows. I then added my second color and spun again for five more rows. Before adding my third color, I tied the old two color tails together so that the hole would be closed. I repeat this for a total of 110 rows. I also like to make sure that when I change colors, it's in the same exact position as the other color changes so that it can be like a seam on the back of the beanie. After 110 rows, I added my scrap yarn for 10 rows before spinning it off the machine. To close the cat beanie, first pull one end to the other from the inside and make sure that the inside is neat and even. Then look at the end of the beanie. There will be these stitches that show where the color changes. Take your crochet hook and insert it into the stitches that are the color of the start of the cat beanie from the stitch closest to you, the two in the middle from the end that you brought through the inside and into the one on the opposite side. Then slip stitch through the four stitches. 
You're going to do this down the row, making sure to slip stitch through all four stitches. Doing this closes the top of the beanie and creates the little ear section of the cat beanie. Once you go through the last stitch, chain one, cut the yarn, and pull to secure. Then take your scrap yarn off and turn your beanie inside out and then the cap beanie is complete. For the scarf, I decided on a solid color scarf, so all I did was add my color of choice and then spun for 339 rows. For scarves, I like for them to be around 340 to 450 rows depending on how much yarn I have. One tip I do have is that around the 250 to 300 row mark, the middle of the machine will get clogged up like this, so you'd have to twist the yarn to get it to be open in the middle again so that the stitches won't fall out. My advice is to untwist it so that the middle is more open like this, and then continue to twist it so that when you start spinning the machine again, the middle will untwist first before getting bulky in the middle. Once you reach the row of your choice, which for me was 339, add 10 rows of your scrap yarn to the project. At the end of the 10 rows, spin while holding the scrap yarn until the project falls off the machine. finish the scarf, look at the end of the scarf. There will be these stitches that show where the color changes. Take your crochet hook and insert it into the stitches that are the color of the scarf from the stitch closest to you to the one on the opposite side. Then slip stitch through the two stitches. You're going to do this down the row, making sure to slip stitch through both sides. This closes the bottom of the scarf. Once you reach the end, go on to the last stitch, slip stitch, chain one, cut the yarn, and pull to secure. Then take the scrap yarn off and your scarf is complete. For the tube top, I'm using a bunch of scrap yarn for the project, so I changed the colors pretty randomly, but you can choose how many rows or colors you want for this. I did a total of 105 rows for the tube top after adding my scrap yarn.
Once you reach 105 rows, add your scrap yarn and spin for 10 rows. Then at the end of the 10 rows, spin while holding the scrap yarn until the project falls off the machine. To finish the tube top, all you're going to do is take your crochet hook and insert it into the first stitch of the color change near the scrap yarn. Take your long tail or add a new yarn tail and single crochet into every stitch until you reach when you started crocheting. Then all I do is slip stitch into the first stitch to the closest row, chain 1, cut the yarn, and pull to secure. Then take the scrap yarn off. Repeat this on the other side. After crocheting the top and bottom of the tube top, I tried the tube top on to see where I would want to add my tie strap and also to kind of stretch out the tube top. It'll be pretty hard to get onto your body the first time, but once you put it on once, it'll be stretched out enough to put it on normally the next time. Once I chose an area for the tie to be, I added my crochet hook into the stitch of my choice, which was the middle of the front of the tube top, and pulled some yarn through. I then tied the yarn and began to chain 50. I would personally recommend chaining at least 70 so that it can fit over your head comfortably and if you want it to be tighter you can just tie it in the back. After chaining your desired amount, slip stitch into the stitch next to where you started the chain. Chain 1, cut the yarn and pull to secure. Now all you have to do is weave in your tails and you're done. I truly love how easy and simple all these projects are and they're incredibly versatile to wear. You can add your own style to it or even change up the patterns and just experiment with any types of ideas that you have. I hope these tutorials were helpful for you and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!